Good morning. I hope you're ready for block five. I think everybody is. So I'm, I'm late getting it posted this month. Uh, but today's the day. Um, you know, I've told you before that uh, I usually lay out my previous blocks so that I can, because I'm doing a scrappy quilt, and I can kind of see what direction I'm headed. And um, so I've got four blocks and they're all uh, very subtle in color. I don't have anything that really is bright and pops. So um, I'm gonna do something a little different this month and see if I can get it to fit into my quilt. So um, this month, our block isn't really um, anything that's going to have a new skill builder involved in it. We're going to revisit uh, some of the uh, methods and techniques that we've already done so far to kind of keep us refreshed and uh, um, help us to practice and, and um, you know, keep keep these great techniques in our minds so that when we're working on other quilts, we'll be able to remember how we did this and save ourselves fabric and time. So this this month, the block needs three fabrics. You're going to need a background and two prints. Um, I wasn't quite sure which of these you know that I thought I would use that would maybe fit into my quilt probably it'll be this one and this will be my background and these two will be my prints and um, I do have a directional print here so if you're using a print that has a direction you'll want to pay attention to that because we're going to be making uh, blocks that are very similar to the flying geese blocks that we made in block one back in January. So we need we need all the geese to fly in the same direction, so to speak. So um, I think I'm gonna use these three. I like these, but uh, this is really dark. And so this would probably be my background fabric and these big little moths on here are, are pretty big print so probably will not work um, so I'll use these so let me go get these pressed and we'll start cutting our blocks out which is also going to be very easy this month um, and pressing as far as pressing goes remember to use terial magic uh, and a little water or spray starch something that you can get your fabric really really stiff uh, you want to have this fabric just starched as much as you can get it um, I didn't pre-wash any of this but um, I think it'll be just fine um, so press with terial magic and water use a dry iron no steam um, try to avoid steam if you can um, Let's see, I think that's all about the pressing. So I will get this pressed up and we'll be back and we'll cut out our block. Okay, I'm all, I've got everything pressed really well. I didn't press this half, I just pressed this half because this month our, uh, the pieces that we have to cut out are not very big. So I'm going to square up the edge. That's kind of what we do every month. And this is my background fabric. So now I have to turn it around because I'm right handed so I have to cut it this way <laughs> so that I can tell what I'm doing. And. This fabric is really pretty. I don't know what line it is, though. I think it's Eliza from Wyndham Fabrics. 
Okay, so we need, I'm going to look at my notes, I need eight background squares, three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. So I'm just going to cut a three and seven eighths inch strip and then I'll sub cut that. I'm glad you guys are having fun with these little quilt blocks. I didn't realize how uh, much everybody looked forward to them until this month when I'm late getting the video posted and um, golly just I just see what how many people are saying where is our where's our block of the month well, I'm glad that you enjoy them okay so Three and seven eighths is right here. And I'm using a four inch ruler here. So three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. And it's going to be tricky. Uh, I can see here right now. So you'll have to be really careful that you don't end up on the quarter inch line because the eighth inch line. Um, is bordered on my Omnigrid ruler. I don't know, maybe if you use a different brand of ruler it'll look different, but mine's a little wild on the edge. So, <laughs> just a word of wisdom there. I think I'll have to cut two strips. I don't see that I'm going to get eight out of this one. So make sure your rotary cutter is good and sharp. Clean your machine. Clean it really good. Start with a new needle. And I like, you've heard me say this before, but I like to do patchwork with a 65-9 needle. And I, the reason I like it is because it makes a really little hole in the fabric. And I use uh, Aurifil thread. That's my favorite, favorite thread. It's wonderful for patchwork and garment sewing and everything. All right, well, I got four. So I'm going to cut another three and seven eighths inch strip and then I can get my last four out of that. Remember on your big rulers the seven eighths mark is on the Omnigrid rulers it's just a little short line. The eighth inch marks are just little short lines the quarter inch and half inch and full inch marks are made with, are marked on the ruler with much bigger lines. Boy, I've got enough of this fabric left to make at least two more blocks. Cutting eight, eight at a time out of there. Okay, got to square up my end here where you can see me. I'll just I'll come in just a little ways and square this up on the end. And now we'll do four more of the three and seven eighths inch squares. The reason that I'm late this month 
is because last month, the month of April, well, actually March, I started watching really close on the groups to see if I could tell if the uh, same questions came up a lot. I mean, I know that everybody realizes that some questions do come up a lot, but I wanted to know, I gotta check this. Uh, I, I wanted to know if, you know, which ones were the most prominent. And um, one of them was making a quilt label on the machine using the built-in fonts and built-in designs. And uh, another one was sewing, when you're quilting, uh, sewing points. And so what I did, the reason that I'm late, is because I made a three video series and I'm going to post that here on the group, so look for that, on making a little mini quilt. And uh, I just tried to cover everything I could see coming up on the groups every day. I kept checking back and, and <clears throat> so I finished that got the last video uploaded to my YouTube channel yesterday and today I'm doing our block of the month and after this I'll be all caught up let's see now we need one square all we need is one square from both of our prints and that square has to be seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter so let me see what I've got here for a ruler. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Gotta do it this way. So here is seven and a quarter along my cut edge. So I can bring it down a little bit, but this edge is down here isn't it's not square, so I can't use it. And of course you've heard me say over and over and over again that um, you know I might as well go ahead and just square that up. Because I see I'm gonna need to move my ruler down. So we'll just do it and that'll be that. And this is my fabric that I have to pay attention to the direction on. And hopefully it'll <laughs> hopefully it'll work out so that it all goes the right way and you can read the text on the paper. Okay, now I have a straight line, so I need seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. So there it is, right there. Okay, let me double check. Seven and a quarter. Too wide. Good thing you check, huh? Want well, to be sure and check all your stuff before you cut. What did they say? Measure twice, cut once. You know, I don't even really like this edge. I wonder what this one looks like. Let me try this edge. I guess I'm going to get particular today. Now, I think I was on the wrong side of the fabric is maybe what my trouble was. Oh yeah, this looks much better. No, it doesn't. <laughs> yes, it does. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, this looks better. I like this better. 
And, you know, like in all of our blocks, once we get our little um, rectangles together, we're going to square them up, so it'll be okay. So here is one seven and a half inch square. And then we need one more, and we're ready to start stitching. So we'll set that over there, and I might as well square up one edge of this while before I even get started. Why not? There we go. Now I just have to remember which edge I squared up. And this is the side, and I've got a selvage. So you always want to take your selvages off. Don't put your, try not to put your selvages into your quilts because, oh, they just never seem to work out quite right. Okay, so this is my, yep, this is my pressed side. Get my ruler out of the way. Okay, now seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Um, there we go. I have to go in a little. Okay, that's it. I just backed up just a little bit so that I didn't catch any threads in this little corner there because I mean backed up with my rotary cutter because I didn't want to I don't want to pull it in the under the ruler now I'm going to put my fabric away and we are going to start sewing This block is going to start sounding and feeling very familiar to you as we go along here. It is the same technique we used in the January block. So now we're going to we're going to draw a line corner to corner on all of our background blocks, the three and seven eighths inch blocks. We're just going to draw a line, and I'm using a friction marker, so. Um, you know, make sure you use something that you can either iron away or, although we're going to sew on each side of the line, so it's we're going to cut most of it off when we cut our blocks apart. But remember how we did our... Uh, flying geese, the method we use to make our flying geese in block one. That's what we're going to do here, uh, except we're going to sort of um, kind of flip the idea. And this time we're not going to be looking so much at the flying geese, but we're going to be looking at the big triangle. Um, this block is typically it's called the Yankee Puzzle, but I don't have any names for any of my blocks, so you can. It's just a little bit different than the Yankee Puzzle, but if you look at it, it looks awful close, and it has kind of a oh, kind of a pinwheel look to the center of it, depending on how you put your rectangles together. You'll see when we when we get to that part of it. And this block goes together, cuts out, presses, goes together so fast. If you wanted to just practice stitching and patchwork cutting. You could make a whole bunch of these this month and you could make a table runner or a table cloth or 
You could make a throw sized quilt. Okay, so here's, here's our, remember how we did this in block one. We're going to lay these this way. And they, it looks a little weird because it looks like you're going to sew off into nothing. But we're going to sew all the way down on both sides of this line, a quarter inch. So I'm going to pin mine because I need to. I've got my edges lined up really good, but you know, when you transport something from your workspace to your sewing machine, unless you're sitting right there, it's easy for things to shift. So then we're going to do it again on our other 7 eighths inch, 7 and a quarter, sorry, 7 and a quarter inch square. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'll put a pin. And same same uh, stitching deal. We're going to sew a quarter inch on each side of the line. And then we're going to cut on the line. So let's go do that and get that done. And then we'll be back. And uh, this is going to go together so fast, you're not going to believe it. Okay, we're all ready to stitch. And this is just basic, uh, you know, just basic stitching. I'm going to, I'm using my 37D foot. Um, and I need to put my dual feed down. Because it's a D foot. Anytime you have a D foot on, you should have your dual feed engaged. It won't stitch right if you don't. And I'm starting on the fabric, and I'm holding my threads a little bit. And I'm not going to have any thread mess. So I'm going to just sew right with the, the line that I drew, right on the right-hand side of my presser foot. And I'm going to just... And I'm going to sew on both sides of the line. <clears throat> I know I keep repeating that, but it's easy to forget. Because sometimes we do sew on the line, and sometimes we don't. All right, so now we'll go down the other side. I'll trim my thread tails. Keep your work nice and neat. And uh, we'll head down the other side. And we'll be well on our way. Okay, here we go. I have my machine set up to stop with the needle down. Um, I almost always keep it that way. Uh, it's pretty handy in about anything. Okay, here we go. You see, I'm going to have to move my pen, so I'll just take it out. Make sure my line's straight. There we go. <clears throat> this is a fun, fun block. Great for beginners. If you're an accomplished quilter, this is a wonderful mental break from complicated quilt block patterns. Just sit down and do some easy peasy sewing. And 
Well, we got Mother's Day coming up, you know. Sunday. So we've got three days you could put something quick together. Okay, both of these are sewn now. So we'll go back over to the workstation and we'll cut them apart and we'll line up our other, uh, the rest of our background blocks and get them pinned on and ready to stitch. And pretty quick our block is gonna be done. Okay. We're back over here at the workstation. I'm gonna take my pins out. And we're gonna cut this right down the middle on the line. And this one. There we go. And the, the best way to do this is to press these guys toward the background fabric. I know it's lighter and uh, the general rule of thumb is to always press toward the darker fabric, but this time we need to do toward the light to get these up out of our way. And I'm just I'm just finger pressing right now. So now we are going to take this square and we're going to set it right in here. And remember, is it looking familiar? Do you remember how our other how we did our other flying geese blocks, how they came like this? And when we we are going to stitch on each side of the line again. And when we cut these apart, we're going to have our flying geese blocks, except this time the focus will be on the large triangle. So, okay, let's see now. Let's put one on here. Okay. This one, I think we sew on both sides. I better check, but I'm pretty sure we have to sew on both sides. Maybe not. Maybe we'll sew right on the line. I don't think so, though. I think we have to sew on both sides. Let me check my notes. Yep, sew on both sides. I thought so. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you get to where you doubt yourself. So it's always good to have your pattern or your directions handy. And that way. <clears throat> and when we uh, when we cut these apart, these next ones, we're going to true up these little rectangles. And they are supposed to be six and a half by what did I say? Three and a half by six and a half is what they're supposed to be. So we'll true those up. And then there's nothing left but to put the block together. So we're in good shape. There we go couple of pins and I'll go and stitch these. Okay, be right back. Okay, we're all stitched down the both sides of the line on our corner pieces. 
And I'm just taking my pins out here and then I'm going to cut on this line. Make sure we got right in the middle. Doesn't have to be because all you really need to do is separate these two pieces, but I think your pressing and, and the rest of the assembly of the block will go better if we cut right on the line. There we go. Look at that. That was pretty fast, huh? <laughs> okay, well, we get this done. You know, you could sit down this next week and chain piece these and turn out enough blocks to make a really pretty little throw and then do edge to edge quilting and you know quilt it on the machine the next week and in that short of a time you'd have a really pretty little little quilt and you could do it with scraps wouldn't that be fun kind of a challenge but it would be fun I'm just finger pressing all these over and <laughs> I'm not going to worry about my text on this fabric I guess it's going every direction but the right way well here's one this one's going the right way I guess I would have had to fussy cut to make this work but oh well it'll make my quilt unique okay now let's lay this out and I'm going to try to do this the right way. You know me. I never, I don't pay good enough attention uh, to, let's see here. It's got to have, it has to have a pinwheel in the middle. So I might have to go look at my drawing. Yep, I am. going to have to go look at my drawing, I guess. got a pinwheel in the middle. You do every other one or you could do um, you know two and two. I like every other one on this deal. So let's see then it'll be that one and then that one. That's how it works right there. Okay. So I think that's how I'm going to put my block together. So the next thing is to piece these quadrants. Actually, the next thing is we're going to we're going to true all these little rectangles up to uh, what did I say? Two and a half by six and a half, three and a half by six and a half. So these have to be three and a half. Ooh, perfect by six and a half. So I guess that's what we got to do next is true these guys up. Then we'll sew the four quadrants together and then sew the rest of the block. All right, where do I want to be on this thing? I just got this ruler. It's, it's kind of got me, I'm off in my mind, I guess, a little bit with it. Okay. So, this way. <laughs> I got this from Missouri Star Quilt Company. If you sign up for their newsletter, uh, wow, I don't have to trim anything on that one. It's perfect. But if you sign up for their newsletter, every day you'll get an email. And in that email, there'll be a special. And sometimes it's fabric, sometimes it's um, tools and notions, sometimes it's thread, sometimes it's a free pattern. And uh, I got this ruler 
and I all a lot of time I watch for quilt padding because whenever they have the um, the kind of quilt batting that I like go on sale then I buy several because I like buying the throw sizes for smaller quilt projects so uh, anyway this this ruler this is a Missouri Star Quilt Company ruler and I think it was normally t like $22 or something and the daily special that's what they call the, the when they send you the email they call it the daily special and that's it was this ruler that day and it was like nine bucks I mean the daily special is a it's always just a killer deal so I sent for it and it was like two dollars for shipping or something I mean they're very reasonable and they'll they have um, quite often they'll have charm packs or you know something if you want to build your stash I don't I don't usually add to my stash because I end up with enough scraps at the end of every year to make an, another nine quilts so I don't worry too much about um, building up a stash I know some ladies love it and I mean good deal must be great because, you know, whenever I want to make something, I usually just go out and buy what I need just for that project. But it would be, it would be really nice to, to be home and stay home and just go back into your, you know, wherever you keep your fabric and pick out something for your project. Okay. Now this is going to be just like we've done before. When I sew this at a quarter of an inch, I'm going to make sure that my needle goes in on in the seam allowance side of this point right here. You can see my little crisscross here where the seams come together. And in order to keep this point really pretty when the quilt block is done, I have to be on the inside this side of that crosshairs of stitching right there. So we'll do uh, all of them that way. Now I have to pay attention here or I'm gonna I am gonna mess this up really bad. <laughs> and it won't matter. I'll either have a, a light tan or a dark looking center, which will be fine. Let's see, gotta go this way. So I need a dark and a light. It is gonna change on me. That's okay, I don't mind. So what I'm gonna do is, as you're watching me work here, I'm gonna go ahead and pin all these rectangles that are nice and accurate together making sure that all my edges are even and I'm going to pin all my points making sure all that lines up and when I stitch I'll stitch on the outside of the point and not the inside so this one will go here and so now I need another dark and light and dark and light and now you can kind of see the pinwheel going around in the middle but um, it's actually more uh, designed more like the Yankee star so I'll go sew these these four quadrants together and then we'll look at what we're going to do with this wad of stuff here in the middle of the block 
All right, guys, I've got my four quadrants made. So now we're going to put our two sides together and we're going to be really careful that we don't mess this up right here because there's a point right there too so we'll have to pin real carefully there. I'm just going to put a kind of a random pin in there and then when I get to the sewing machine I'll work at it really carefully. I might put a mark where my transition is. So, okay, then this one's going to go together this way. Same kind of a deal. I'm just going to put a random pin here so that when I get over to the machine, I will really fine tune this so that I can get this this point here on this end of the of this triangle. So I'm going to take my pencil with me so I can make my little marks and I'll do these two seams and I'll be right back. So I wanted to show you how I how I'm going to get through this little point right here even though it's it, it's going to be folded this way. I just took my friction pen and opened out the little seam and I put a pin right straight through where the dot was and then I could see it right here and I just put a little dot with my friction pin and that way when I'm sewing all I have to worry about as long as my top edges are even all I have to worry about is being just a little bit on the outside of that dot. I'll treat it just like I did my points. I'll be on the outside of them just a little bit. So I'm going to do that with this one too. So I just put a pin and uh, marked my little dot right here where the tip of my point is on my triangle. And all I have to do now, and these, these seams down here at the end they're going to come to a point also, but if you have the edges, this edge and this edge, lined up, they should be perfect because they're nesting. One seems going this way and one seems going the other way. So they, they should be perfect. So now I'll just line everything up and we'll go sew. I'll go sew. <laughs> You're probably sick of watching me sew. One more pin. Okay, I'm ready to sew these two seams right here. Okay, be right back. Everything looks pretty good. I'm liking it a lot. This looks like a lot more than a quarter inch to me right here. I'm going to have to, I'm going to worry about that until we see how that comes together in the middle. So now we're ready to deal with this central uh, little pinwheel thing and getting things lined up. And I have not pressed anything so far. Let me scoot this over a little bit so you can see better. I haven't pressed anything so far. Because we have, we've got some bias edges going on. Uh, this is a little bit of a bias edge here. This is a bias edge here. And even though I have these starched very, very, very stiffly, I still don't want to risk, you know, pressing something out of shape. And so far my points are looking really great. And I so I just have a couple of pins in here to kind of hold the seams the way that I want them to go. So now we're going to assemble the block and finish it up and then really carefully we'll press it. So this seam 
This seam wants to go that way really bad. And this seam is going to have to go back the other way in order for us to nest these in the middle. So that is what is going to have to happen. And I'm sure hoping that I'm not way off on my seam allowance there. That, that one place looked a lot more than a quarter of an inch to me. So we'll see, I guess. I'll go ahead and stitch this central seam. And if I need to, I can, I, I do have a seam ripper. <laughs> so I can, I never like to use it, but I do have one. And then when we get it all together, let's just hope and and pray that it measures 12 and a half inches. That's always my worries when I get this, get a block all finished, that the crazy thing won't be the right size. But so far with this quilt, we've done pretty good. We've done pretty good. I have to check here. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I think that's going to be fine. Okay, so I'm going to go and and stitch this last middle seam and I'll be right back and then we'll press this and we'll see if we how much bulk we have down in here. Okay so we're I made it all the way across and here um, once again let me see if I can get you down here where you can see a little better. Once again I made some little dots so that I could tell where the point was on my big triangle. Looks like I caught the fabric a little bit there. Oh, it's not bad. Okay, good. Okay, everything looks pretty good. I still haven't pressed anything yet. And there's my center. That looks great. All my points are there. That looks really good. Okay, so I am gonna go and press this really carefully and I'm just going to press just a portion of it at a time very carefully and slowly and I don't think I'm going to do anything special with this central I'm probably going to press it to one side yeah I'll probably press it to one side I'll see how it how it wants to behave it wants to behave itself when I get this part pressed here I'll see how this one's behaving and uh, if it's gonna be all right I'll go ahead and press it and press the rest of it okay be right back so this is a 12 and a half inch Omnigrid ruler and I'm just a little bit off about an eighth of an inch here and from about there to there let's see I've got to drag you out so you can see what I'm talking about there we go I'm a I'm I'm an eighth or, or so of an inch off along this side pretty consistent all the way and on this side I'm off about an eighth of an inch from there to there so I think I can work that out when I'm putting the borders on the blocks I don't really want to change anything because nothing looks off so some way or other maybe my fabric shrank just a little bit when I was pressing but I don't think so and this is the way I ended up pressing everything this goes this way this goes this way this way this way and then um, and I do need to go in and kind of trim out my dog ears because uh, if I machine quilt my whole quilt when I'm done these things aren't very fun to have in the quilt for a long arm quilter. I, 
if I can do edge to edge, I think it would be fine. But but I'm I'm liking it. I think I'm gonna um, I'm gonna think about this for a little bit to see. Here's a little bit of a there's my there's an eighth of an inch. I pressed a little crease into the um, into the block right there. That's something that you have to kind of watch for that stuff. I pressed it from the back to begin with, and then I should have pressed it better on the front because there's an eighth of an inch right there, and it goes from there to there, so that could be um, part of what my trouble is. But I don't see that I've done it anywhere else. Maybe it's just a tiny bit, but I think that's going to be it then. It's, it's just going to be... it's. It was in my pressing this time, I think. But there it is, a pretty little block. Um, and I hope you make a whole bunch of these and and put together something fun, because this is a really simple block. It's lots of fun, um, easy to do, and, um, you know, pretty when it's done. Really, really pretty. So, uh, for those of you that are posting photos of your blocks on the groups that you're making along with me, I love it. Um, your blocks are just beautiful, and I'm so incredibly proud of each one of you. I, I know that for some of you, embarking on this was a big deal. But I, I am so proud of you. You're all continuing along. Nobody has dropped out and said, I can't do it. Because I'm glad because you can do it. And just uh, remember all the rules that we've talked about as we've gone along. You know, cut accurately, stitch with an accurate quarter inch seam allowance, keep your machine maintained, a new needle, good thread and uh, go slow, don't use steam in your iron. All these things help you to enjoy some success with the blocks that you make each month. So um, keep, keep going, stay with me, and we're gonna have something really, really beautiful when our block of the month is all done and our quilts are together. So, as usual, <laughs> I want you to have a great day today, and I want you to make something beautiful and take pictures and post it on the groups. See you next month.